Welcome back. iNews had a chance to sit down with potential Congressman Gary DeLong. Let's check it out. So we're here with City Councilman of Long Beach, Gary DeLong, and also Republican Congressional candidate for the 47th District, as well as you're on the Board of Directors for Long Beach City College. I am, yes, on the Board of Governors, yes. Board of Governors, sorry. <laughs> the Board of Governors. What is that job? Exactly. You know, that job is to really just be a representative out in the community. You know, certainly we, we have regular meetings uh, with, with City College uh, executives so we know what's going on and what's happening at City College. But be kind of a spokesperson that you're aware of what's going on, what a great asset uh, the City College is in our city, just how wonderful it is. I'm glad to be a part of it. Great. Um, you Tell us, if you were, if you were to be elected... Uh, Congressman for the 47th district. Mm -hmm. What bills would you introduce in the first 90 days? You know, I don't think I would introduce anything in the first 90 days, and I would be suspicious of anybody that did, right? Because you really don't want me to come in there with some political agenda that I'm trying to get done. But certainly from the first day, I would work at, at, at getting our budget into balance and getting our economy working again. I would get that in the first day, the second day, the third day, and for every day of the first 100 days and then beyond. Because that's what's important and that's what needs to be fixed. So, um, is there any positions that you would take that are contrary to Long Beach City Hall's, um, you know, uh, um, legislative agenda? No, I don't think so. I mean, you're, you're elected to represent your constituents and part of your constituency of the cities you represent. And, and candidly, while I might have my preferences, once the city council goes through its process to determine its federal legislative agenda and submits it, it's, it's the congressional representative's job to make it happen. And that would be true for Long Beach or for any other city that I would represent. Right. Okay. Um, Gregory Hessler on Facebook had a question for you. Would you favor raising the income tax rates on the ultra wealthy until the debt is paid down to a more manageable level? Well, I would tell you that that wouldn't be the first two things I would do, because the first thing I would do is I would reduce the size of government, because as we talked earlier, it's doubled in 10 years. So problem number one is you've got to shrink government to save costs. Then number two, you need to grow the economy. So we need to support the private sector. We need to grow the economy, generate tax revenue. Now, if you've cut the government to a manageable size and you've grown the economy and that's on a healthy rate and you're still lacking in funding, would I, would I look at additional tax revenue? Sure, I think you have to look at it. I mean, I, I think one of the reasons that we have this, this polarization and gridlock now is because people are unwilling to compromise. They're, they're unwilling to, to find consensus. So while I would consider that, I've got to be honest with you, it wouldn't be my first choice. I think we need to do the other two things first. And when you've done that, if you're still not there, then you have to have an open mind. Okay. Um, uh, Rick and David McGilton McGlamory on Facebook asked this question. How would you vote on issues concerning gay equality, like, for instance, gay marriage? How do you feel about that? Well, I guess what I would tell you is that I have a large uh, constituency today uh, from the community, and I've always voted in support of their objectives as a Long Beach City Council member, and I would continue, expect to continue to do so as their congressional representative. Because then again, I, I represent everybody. So should gays be allowed to be married? I think it's appropriate. Sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well. Uh, do you think maybe you'll lose some votes on that one? I mean, Republicans don't ne necessarily uh, like the whole gay marriage idea. Yes, I'm, cer I'm sure that I will lose some votes on that, but that doesn't mean it's not the right thing to do. Okay, okay. What about term lim limits? Jim Dano from Facebook asks, Gary, what is your position on term limits um, for congressmen? Well, you know, I'm going to be wishy-washy on that, and I'll tell you why. As, as a local elected official here in Long Beach, I strongly support term limits. I think they're wonderful. I think two terms, eight years, is more than sufficient. So I'm a strong supporter of term limits. On the other hand, I've never been in Sacramento, but as I understand it from those people that are very familiar, term limits are terrible. Term limits have resulted in many of the problems that we have today with people not being able to work together, not being able to get things done, the state legislature being so dysfunctional, the leadership just, just doing so poorly, the ownership of the public unions owning our elected officials. So term limits have been bad in Sacramento. So the answer is I don't know. Okay. I don't know in Washington. If it's more like Long Beach where I think term limits are good, yes, I would support it. If I think it's going to make things worse like it is in Sacramento, then I would be opposed. But, but candidly, I don't know that I would, I would know until I get there and figure it out. But I, I'm open to it. What, what do you, what, as far as the things that we've already discussed beyond those, is there anything else that's really important to you that you want to get done in Washington? No, I would say again, fix the economy, get get growth going. Uh, I, I guess the two things that I would actually probably increase spending on is infrastructure, okay. 
I mean, you look back at what the President Eisenhower accomplished in the 50s when he built the coast-to-coast, -coast, you know, interstate highway system. You know, where, where are those kinds of visions? You look in the 60s when President Kennedy started the space program, look at those accomplishments. We, we don't have any of those today, and, and I think we, we, we should be investing in our future and for our, our kids' future. So I would like to see more money being invested in infrastructure for long-term benefits. And the other thing I think we need to do is I think we need to, to reform our education system. I think our education system is broken. Long Beach Unified laid off almost 800 people, most of them teachers in June. Right. Yes, they have. And increased and, class size. And, and higher education is getting beat up as well. I mean, to give you an example, I have a kindergartner. I have kindergartner to college students, but our kindergartner that started earlier this year, we always thought that she would be in Long Beach Unified and that's where she'd get her education. Yes, she's there for kindergarten, but we're on the, the one-year plan. She has a good year, we'll renew for first grade. She has a re good, another good year, we'll renew to second grade. But i got to tell you, based on the budget cuts that are coming, because of the way that the state legislature is so mismanaging the budget up there, I think it's unlikely that she will finish in Long Beach Unified. I, I think the quality of our educational system has the potential to deteriorate pretty significantly and she won't be able to go there. We won't be able to afford to keep her in public schools, we'll put her in a private school. And I think that will be very detrimental to Long Beach and other communities. So education is certainly a passion of mine. And, and Long Beach would lose the, um, <coughs> the, it's called ADA, but the money that they get for students. Um, what happen, what, what's going to happen if, um, if people who have means pull their students out? of Long Beach Unified. Will that crush that, the, the system even more? I think the system further deteriorates. Yeah. And what about all the um, people who can't afford to put their students in private school? Well, unfortunately, they're, they're getting what's left that the state legislature gives them. So unless we get a better group of state senators and state assembly members, I, I, I don't see a positive future for education, whether higher education, elementary education. I, I don't see it with the current group of elected officials we have in Sacramento. Well, I think a lot of people feel that way as well. Uh, yeah, I think we're definitely in the minority, on the majority on that one. Okay, one more question for you. Would you participate in a Long Beach City College IE News Republican uh, primary debate? Sure, but I, I guess I would say I hope it's not a Repu Republican primary being for the congressional or for the... For for the congressional. Yes, but I guess let's be all inclusive and invite everybody. Invite everybody? I mean, why have okay. a Republican well, versus a four, Democrat? So we can yeah. probably do well with no, that. No, I think you should have everybody in there. And I, I think people really want to get away from the labels. They want to get okay. away from Republicans, Democrats. I, I think more people than ever are, are going to the decline of state, the independent, voting across party lines. So I think you should put, put all of us up. Okay. Well, I'd be happy to do that. Great. Thank you so much for being here with us. You're very welcome. Councilman, we appreciate Thank you. it. This is Michelle LaCour for IE News. Thanks so much, Michelle. Coming next semester, we will have a continuation of congressional candidate interviews and a special IE News political debate.